Welcome to Geek's Guide to Video Optimization for Branches. This is a new series where Citrix Technical Marketing is going to be covering a new technical topic every month. Hi, I'm Matt Brooks and I'm an architect with the team. Let's set the stage for our session today and talk about why we care about video optimization for branches. Well, video has fairly strict QoS requirements, so if you can manage it well, you can manage most content well. To deliver it with high quality, we have to focus on a few things. We need to minimize jitter, which is that average difference between inner packet spacing. We need to avoid loss, which causes retransmissions. And we need to minimize latency, which can lead to delay in video playback. And delivering that video to branches is more challenging by the nature of the inherent unreliability of the access circuits used and the long haul network delivery challenges can vary depending on whether the video content is hosted on premises, is hosted somewhere in the internet, or is hosted specifically by a major cloud provider or SaaS site. Well, first we'll discuss a baseline using capabilities within Citrix virtual apps and desktops to deliver video hosted anywhere optimally. Then we'll look at the benefits of adding Citrix S2WAN to the environment for video content hosted on-prem. And next we'll look at how we can optimize delivery of video hosted on specific sets of SaaS sites on the internet. Then we'll look at our newest S2WAN service to further optimize cloud hosted video. Let's get started by talking about HDX adaptive technology that's a part of Citrix virtual apps and desktops to optimize delivery of video hosted anywhere. Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops is an ubiquitous, versatile technology that can be delivered to anywhere, from anywhere. It has broad control over the client's endpoint and VDA server host, yet the network in between is essentially a black box. However, the HDX suite of protocols, which manage every aspect of session delivery, includes adaptive throughput, adaptive transport, and adaptive display technology to help manage delivery over variable network conditions. Adaptive throughput seeks to transmit maximum data across the network. It adjusts output buffering in accordance with congestion and loss using efficient algorithms to balance output buffers with throughput. Adaptive transport version 2 seeks to optimize network delivery. TCP flow control can be slow to adjust to networking conditions, so it uses proprietary EDT protocol to manage transport, and it can fall back to TCP as needed. With adaptive display, the codecs used to display different content can be changed to provide the best visual output for the network capacity available. And if you have environments with known static network conditions, you can pre-configure policies in your delivery controller for optimized video. For more information on these settings and adaptive technology, see the Tech Insight video done by my colleague Mayank Singh. Now let's talk about introducing Citrix S2Win into the environment using its auto multi-stream ICA feature to optimize video delivery. Citrix S2Win creates secure virtual tunnels across all available paths between instances. They measure characteristics and communicate regarding their view of the network in real time. Then they identify traffic flows and route them on a per packet basis across the optimal path with knowledge of the quality each can offer and reassemble flows for delivery at their destination, providing the best possible application user experience. With multi-stream ICA single port with auto QoS, with no configuration changes on delivery controllers or network equipment, the controller will send all traffic on port 1494 or 2598. Then the SD-WAN appliance will identify the class of service by inspecting an uncompressed virtual channel in the HDX stream called NSAP. With this knowledge, it will break out real-time traffic and based on real-time quality of service conditions, SD-WAN will route it accordingly, and it'll also break out that interactive, bulk transfer, and background traffic and route it accordingly. This will ensure that video is delivered across the best available path ahead of lower priority traffic types. Now let's take a look at the user experience and how to configure it. 
Here in our endpoint, where we're logged into our Citrix workspace, we'll go ahead and launch a virtual desktop. Once we're in our session, we'll start playing a video, and based on constrained branch bandwidth, we'll see that we have acceptable visio, visual and audio quality. But as we resize the playback window, we'll notice some impact of that quality based on the interactive mouse traffic. And now if we navigate to a virtual directory located in the data center, we'll select a large file to copy to a local directory on our endpoint here in our branch office. As we start the copy, we'll start to notice there's an impact on the network bandwidth. And as that bandwidth usage ramps up, we'll notice that it affects the video quality and audio quality. And if we pause it here, we'll see that it turns the sunset into gritty blocks of pink. Here in our master control node, or MCN, where we configure and monitor all S2N appliances centrally, we'll navigate to the monitor tab, and in the connections section, we'll notice that we have a single ICA flow, representing the file transfer and video traffic. Now if we navigate to the configuration section under virtual WAN configuration editor, we'll notice that there are two sites. The first represents our primary data center. We'll see that there are two LAN interfaces and the first has two ports that are bridged together, which are configured with the subnet where the VDA is hosted. We'll also notice that our interface is configured representing our WAN links. Then at the other site representing our branch, we'll also see that there's a pair of ports bridged together with a subnet where the branch endpoint is hosted. Likewise, we'll notice interfaces representing our WAN links. Now if we navigate to the global config section, We'll see we have deep packet inspection enabled, and we'll go ahead and enable that for Citrix ICA applications. This will allow us to utilize our single port multi-stream feature. Then we'll go ahead and save our configuration, and we'll export that to our change management inbox. Once we export the config to the change management inbox, we'll be able to navigate there and follow our standard process to update our appliances. Here we'll be able to go ahead and push our package up with the new configuration to those appliances. We'll begin by staging them and we'll notice transfer of that package to each of them. Then once the transfer is complete, we'll go ahead and activate the stage configuration with that single port multi-stream auto QS feature enabled. And now we'll return to our virtual desktop session. Once we're in our session, we'll go ahead and restart the video. And again, we'll notice reasonably good quality for our bandwidth constrained branch client. And as we resize the window, we won't observe any interruptions from that interactive mouse traffic. And the quality remains consistent and the colors are sharp. Now if we go ahead and navigate to the virtual directory in the data center, We'll go ahead and copy a large file again. And as now as the we'll notice that as that bandwidth go ahead and goes ahead and ramps up, we don't see the impact to the video that we'd seen previously. We'll notice that the colors remain sharp and the consistent the quality remains consistent. And we don't have that those grinning blocks of pink in the sunset. Now if we go ahead and pause the transfers, we'll switch back to our monitoring tab, and here we'll first we'll notice that we have four different entries representing our four classes of service. And then we'll go ahead and navigate to application QoS in our statistics section, and then we'll go back to our virtual desktop and restart our video. And then we'll notice we have large increments in bytes in the priority one queue in the playback of that class one video traffic. Then if we return to our session, we can go ahead and pause the video and then we'll resume the file transfer. And now back in our monitoring section, we'll notice large increments in the priority two bytes based on that class two file bulk transfer traffic. Now let's talk about using the Citrix SD-WAN deep packet inspection technology to break out individual video flows from the branch directly to the internet 
to reduce latency and optimize delivery. Here we see a virtual Chrome browser session launched from the Virtual Delivery Agent, or VDA, to the branch endpoint over an HDX session with the ICA protocol shown by the green dotted path. When the user navigates to YouTube, the data center hosted VDA resolves YouTube.com and initiates the HTTPS session to the nearest site shown by the yellow dashed path. Then the VDA streams the content back to the virtual Chrome browser. Browser Content Redirection is a Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops feature that allows video streams to be redirected from the VDA to be fetched by the Workspace app local browser engine on Windows or Linux endpoints, yet still displaying a frame within the virtual browser session. By adding it to the environment, we can improve system and network performance. Here we see the virtual Chrome browser session launch from the VDA to the branch endpoint. And now when the user navigates to YouTube, the session invokes the Workspace app local browser engine to initiate a HTTPS session to YouTube.com, which is routed via the data center to the internet outside of the ICA stream and off of the VDA. By introducing Citrix SD-WAN to the environment, we can bring additional benefit to browser content redirection by further reducing latency and costs by moving backhaul traffic off the expensive MPLS network onto inexpensive local internet connections. After the virtual Chrome browser session is launched, the YouTube HTTPS session stream will now be originated by the Workspace app local browser engine by first doing a DNS query for YouTube.com. The authoritative DNS servers for cloud services often use algorithms to respond with the closest target service mirror site pop based on the location of the DNS recursive resolver Citrix SD-WAN supports transparent DNS forwarding to allow resolution of a YouTube pop closest to the branch. Now with the YouTube HTTPS session stream being originated by the Workspace app local browser engine, it may be identified by the Citrix SD-WAN deep packet inspection engine for routing directly to the internet, avoiding the additional latency tax of hairpinning through the data center, providing optimal user experience. Citrix SD-WAN also includes an onboard stateful firewall for additional sec security functionality. And to add other functionality like URL filtering, it can optionally integrate with several leading secure web gateway services by forwarding traffic for inspection over a secure tunnel. Now let's take a look at the user experience and how to configure it. For our user experience, we'll see a YouTube hosted video play on a published Chrome browser. The first session we'll see is default and the second session is optimized. In the default session, we'll notice poor user experience. There are lip sync issues, video stuttering, and audio drops. Let's listen in. The possibility, the potential for a better way to work. And now in the optimized session with both browser content redirection and SD-WAN breakout implemented, let's observe the improvement in visual and audio quality. The potential for a better way to work. The future promises powerful technology. We'll start our admin experience on our delivery controller and navigate to Citrix Studio. Here we'll see we have defined a delivery group and then we have the Google Chrome browser published. Now we'll navigate to policies and we'll create a new policy. We'll search for browser content redirection policies and we'll see the ACL configuration one. Once we select it, we'll see that YouTube is a default setting. We'll go ahead and enable that. And then we'll be able to proceed and select delivery group as the criterion to match the policy. From a drop down, we'll see our delivery group name. We'll select that. And then finally, we'll be able to enable the policy and give a unique name to it. Once we do that, we'll finish the configuration and the policy will become active on the delivery controller. Next, we'll navigate to our VDA. First, we'll open up the Citrix documentation on browser content redirection and we'll navigate to the section for enabling redirection on Chrome browsers. We'll see that we have to implement an extension and then apply some settings to group policy. So here in our local group policy editor, we'll see that we've imported that extension. We'll open the policy setting 
we'll see that we've applied the app ID to apply the extension to our Google, Google Chrome browser. Now we'll navigate to our MCN in the configuration editor. In the basic tab, we'll see that we have the interfaces and the WAN links defined. So first, we'll go to the global setting under applications. And here we'll, we'll create an application object to match YouTube traffic. We'll give it a name and then we'll hit the plus sign and select match type of application. And here we'll select YouTube from the thousands that uh, Citrix S2WAN provides. Next, we'll select domain name based applications and we'll create one also to identify YouTube. We'll give it a name. Then we'll enter star.youtube.com to match any subdomain of the YouTube domain. This will allow us to do a DNS query specifically for YouTube out of the internet service. Next, we'll go to the Sites tab. Here, we'll be sure to select APAC, which is our remote branch. We'll select DNS and we'll create a new service. Here, we'll use the publicly available resolver quad9 with the IP address of 9.9.9.9. We'll apply that. Then we'll go to the connection tab, make sure we still have APAC selected. Then we'll add an internet service and we'll select the WAN link to apply this to. This will allow us to send that internet traffic for YouTube directly up to the internet from the branch. Next we'll go to the firewall section. Here we'll create a policy. First we'll add an entry for YouTube itself. So we'll go ahead and select the match type of application again. And we'll enter YouTube and select it from that list of thousands of object types. We'll do an add. Then we'll also go ahead and add DNS because we're going to want the S2Win instance to send a DNS query for YouTube directly out that internet service as well. And we'll find that listed in the list of protocols there in the applications. We'll select add. And then next we'll navigate to the uh, application routes, and this will be our last setting we have to apply. This will allow us to uh, route the YouTube traffic directly out that internet service once the SD-WAN engine identifies it. We'll go ahead and apply that. Now we can go ahead and save our configuration. So we'll do a save as, and we'll want to give it a unique name to identify it later. Once we save that off, we'll follow our standard process. We'll export it to our change management inbox. And then once we do that, we'll navigate to the change management. We'll go ahead and state the appliances and push that configuration down to the appliances. See the transfer progress there. Then we'll uh, go to the activation section. We'll do activate stage and we'll skip ahead and see that it's been applied. Then last, we'll go to the monitoring section, firewall on the remote branch appliance. First, we'll see there's an entry for ICA and it's being routed over the virtual path back to the data center, which we'd expect. We also see the DNS query for it going over the virtual path, which we also expect. Then we can see the YouTube traffic is now being sent directly to the internet on the branch SDN. Then we can also see that the DNS query for the resolver we configured is being sent directly over the internet, which is also what we want. Last, let's talk about the latest Citrix SD-WAN functionality with the Cloud Direct service, the further optimized cloud hosted video. In the cloud era, application once delivered from the data center continue to migrate to the cloud. And while rerouting branch traffic from hairpitting via the data center to sending it directly to the internet helps reduce latency, there are still challenges with this approach. As packets travel from one site to another across the public internet, they're routed through a series of autonomous systems. And while there may be adequate bandwidth initially, there may be outages in transit, causing routing across links with limited bandwidth, or with congestion causing retransmission, delaying delivery, and ultimately reducing the user experience. By having SD-WAN traffic sent over virtual path sites to the nearest cloud direct pops, they have a conduit to a high speed network that will honor their quality of service tags, avoiding bandwidth limitations or congestion. There are several other benefits, including bonding at the first mile, making all media types, irrespective of their general reliability, act like one circuit, which allows SD WAN to seamlessly fail over links during outages, avoid transmission issues, 
prioritize traffic, and send duplicate streams selecting the best quality delivered packets on the far end, all while providing redundant access pops. With Sudix Cloud Direct Service, you're reducing latency, loss, and jitter while increasing end-to-end -end bandwidth. And by bringing branch users closer to cloud content through its direct peering with major service and cloud providers, and by providing high-speed access circuits, and through a variety of last mile optimization technologies. Now let's look at how to configure it. We'll start our configuration in Citrix ST WAN Center by navigating to Cloud Direct under Cloud Connectivity. We'll select the sites available from the list and we'll select the links, we'll select the WAN type, and we'll enter the WAN bandwidth that we'll want to allocate for Cloud Direct Connectivity. Once we've selected our intended links, we'll select subscription bandwidth available from our available licenses. Then again, from the available pops, we'll select the primary and a secondary pop. Once we do add, we'll have the, completed the configuration for that particular branch. We'll go ahead and select that branch and we'll do deploy. We'll notice a series of change management messages on the top as the changes are pushed down to the branch sites. We'll get a notification once the configuration is complete. And we'll notice under service status deployed, as well as appliance status that it's enabled. Now if we go ahead and select the entry that we configured, we'll see under details that we have a, a healthy site. And we'll see individual statuses for uh, the two lines that we configured. Now back in the dashboard, we'll also see uh, summary statistics. We'll select the site that we configured. And we'll notice uh, details available such as bandwidth utilization, latency, and packet loss. We'll see individual statistics as well as aggregate statistics. And then our performance, we'll also see details like site throughput. And we'll also see site loss and latency. Okay, that wraps up our content. And I want to leave you with some links where you can get more information on Citrix Texon. If you're not familiar with it, this is a site for content created by technical experts for technical experts, including reference architectures, tech papers, tools, deep dives, and much more. And pertaining to today's session, for more information on the Cloud Direct service, stay tuned for a tech brief coming soon on TechZone. And check out the Tech Insight video on HDX Adaptive Display for more information on optimizing video hosted anywhere in a Citrix virtual apps and desktops environment. Check out the Tech Insight video on Citrix SD-WAN multi-streaming for more information on optimizing video hosted on-premises in a Citrix virtual apps and desktops environment. And check out the Tech Insight video on YouTube optimization for more information on optimizing delivery to Citrix virtual apps and desktop branches. Now we have some time to answer questions raised online.